Welcome back to Soup's Garage, guys. On this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your starter on your 2009, and it should work all the way to 2014 R1. So to get started, I'm gonna show you the symptoms that I'm having on this particular bike. We turn the key on and try to get it started, and this is exactly what we're hearing. Sounds pretty horrible, but that's definitely gonna be one of the symptoms how you know it's gonna be the starter. And you could always try bypassing the starter relay just to make sure that it's not the starter relay. All you have to do is make these two touch. Might be a little bit of a spark, but it will definitely rule out the fact that it's a starter relay. I did that just to be safe. Still had the same issue, so I definitely know it's gonna be the starter in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in this bike and get started on replacing that starter. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is obviously remove your seat. You're just gonna tuck back on your seat and there's two bolts in the back, just like all the other R1s. You're gonna get those two bolts out and the seat should simply just come right off. The next thing we're gonna do is pretty important. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect our battery, but I'm only gonna disconnect the power side. The reason why you wanna do that first is you wanna make sure while you're taking all these wires apart that we don't get any kind of shorts or even possibly burning some wires. So we're not gonna take the risk. It's just not worth it. It's really as simple as just taking a couple of seconds to remove this bolt, get this positive out of the way, make sure they don't touch, and then we can continue forward. Now that I got my power completely disconnected from the battery, we can start the process on removing the gas tank. Now, Again, just like all the other R1s, there's a trim on left and right side, and it's hold by one screw. All right, so I already got that bolt removed on the left side, and simply just pull forward and pull out. Just like that. Remember, it's got some tabs holding on the gas tank. As you can see, there's the back one and there's the front one. We got a little one as well on the very front. So just be careful, guys. Be patient with it. Pull it forward, pull it out, it comes right out. All right, so once you remove your cover, you should have a bolt on the left side here and on your right side as well. Now, as you can see, mine doesn't have it, which is fine. I'm probably gonna find some bolts to put back in there. But the third bolt you gotta get into is the one on top and we should be able to pull that tank up. Now that we have the tank open, you wanna have something that's gonna hold the tank for you just while you disconnect everything that's attached to the bottom of the gas tank. You're gonna have two connectors, one on the right side and one on the left, as you can see the green one there. We're also gonna be disconnecting the fuel line right here. If yours looks just like this and still has the cover, all you gotta do is pull that off, like so, and it comes right off. Now you have access to the tabs, which is one on the left side, and there's gonna be one on the right side. Like usual, you're just gonna push both tabs in, push a little forward, and then pull back. And there we go. Now I have better access to remove that green connector. Got that removed. Same thing for this side. Push the tab in and pull it right out. Next is gonna be these two hoses here. All we gotta do is disconnect these, not the other side, because those stay with the gas tank. You're gonna squeeze these clamps, pull them back just a little bit, and then pull the hose off, and it should come right off. All right, so I got the two hoses disconnected. I did put some tape on the one that I removed from the bottom, because I do wanna make sure that these hoses go exactly where they came from. So now that we have everything disconnected from the bottom of the gas tank and we just got one more bolt to remove to get this gas tank off it's gonna be back here on your subframe right in that circle there all right got the gas tank out of the way next thing we got to do is remove this air box and to do that we're gonna start off by pulling this orange clip up and once you pull it up you can see you get those tabs again like we removed on the gas tank earlier you're just gonna squeeze both push forward and pull out now just remember be aware when you're removing these gas lines you might have a little bit of pressure on there so just be careful with your eyes now that we got the fuel line out of the way we're gonna follow this wire that that's heading from the top of the air box and it's gonna be this little connector. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that. You're gonna pull up on that tab and pull out. We're gonna pull that on the side for now. We're gonna disconnect this hose here. We're gonna use some pliers to squeeze that and pull it back and we're gonna be able to pull that hose off. Once you get the clamp out of the way, just wiggle it and pull off. Now we're just gonna have to remove all the screws around the air box. There's no need to touch the ones on this cover and there's no need to touch the ones on this cover here. You're just removing the outside screws just to take the top off. And it's gonna be a total of 10 screws, five on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And it's the exact same thing on the other side. Do make sure that you get the right screwdriver to remove these because these strip pretty easy. All right, so once you got all those screws removed, just pull up on your air box. Might have to wiggle it a little bit because of the air filter. Put this on the side for now. But just be careful when you put this down, there might be a little bit more fuel in that fuel line. So next we're gonna take off this top throttle flapper. Pretty sure that's not what it's called, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And all we're gonna do is pull forward on these tab, be very gentle with it. There's one, and do the same for the other side. We also have three more on the bottom. One, two, and three. You're gonna do the exact same thing, just pull forward slowly. You're not forcing anything, because it's just plastic. Do the same for all three. 
and it comes right out. Next part we gotta do, we gotta remove a total of six bolts that's holding down the rest of the air box. There's one on the left side, there's one in the center, and there's one on the right. It's the exact same thing on the right side of the air box. And you are gonna need something like this, long enough to go all the way in there and not get in your way. And also, you want it to be as skinny as possible because you wanna make sure that your tool can fit in that center hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started to remove the rest of the air box. Okay, so once you have your air box loosened up, you got all those six screws out of the way, you're gonna use some pliers again to get this clamp. You're just gonna pull it slightly down and pull that hose off. And before you pull it completely off after removing that hose, you're gonna go on your left side and follow this wire here that's connected right here. You're gonna disconnect that before you start pulling off the air box. I find that the easiest way for me is to use a small flathead screwdriver to push down on that tab and then this connector should pull right out. So once you disconnected that hose on the right side and the connector on the left side, you should just be able to pull up on the air box. And now it's time for the fun part. Do not get intimidated by what we all have to disconnect at this point. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of just remembering where everything goes. And luckily for you, you got this video to watch, rewind, and to see if you missed anything along the way. So at this point, we're gonna have to remove the throttle bodies completely because just like the 04 and 06 R1s, the starter is right beneath the throttle body. Now I'm gonna start by disconnecting the five connections on the top of the throttle body. One, two, three, four, and five. And they're pretty easy to disconnect. We're gonna start off by this one on the left side. Squeeze your thumb in there, push the tab in and pull right out. Then we're gonna move on to this one. Same thing, push the tab in, pull off. Then move on to the next. This is the fourth one, tab's gonna be on the right side. And the last one, which is gonna be on the very right, tab's gonna be on the left side. Squeeze it with your thumb and pull off. Now I should take care of all the sensors from the top. We're still gonna have to remove the throttle cables. And do remember, before you start working on throttle cables, just remember which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom. In my case, the black one sits on top and the silver one sits on bottom. So I don't have to do any kind of markings on these because they're already color coordinated. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the top one and it's gonna be a size 10 wrench. Okay, so once you loosen your cable off, just pull back on this tab here and use your thumb to hold the throttle body open like this and it should be pretty easy for you to remove that cable like I did just now with my finger. Now as far as the bottom throttle cable, we're gonna remove that one once we get the throttle bodies loose enough. We might not even have to remove that one, but we'll see once we get further into this. You're gonna have two green connections on the left side. You're gonna disconnect those. One of them, all you gotta do is push the tab in and pull out. And the other one is like the white one we did earlier from the air box. Use a screwdriver to push that tab in and pull right out to make it the easiest way. Okay, so by removing these two connections, it should prevent us from touching any of the connections to the injectors. We should only have one more sensor to disconnect and I won't show you that until we remove the throttle body because we won't have access to it until the throttle bodies are actually out of the way. Okay, so for this part, just like the 0406, you're gonna have four clamps on the bottom of this throttle body. In order to get to the left two, you're gonna have to go from the left side of the engine and in order to go to the right two, you're gonna have to come from the right side of the engine. And you're gonna have to use a pretty long extension to get access to all those. And you are gonna have to get an Allen key to get those loosened up. As you can see, I'm starting on the first one here. It might be a little tight at first, but it will come off. And do make sure you use the right Allen key because if you strip those, it's gonna be really hard to get those out. I'm moving on to the second one. And just remember, we're not removing these completely. We're only loosening them enough to be able to get the throttle bodies off. All right, now moving on to the right side of the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by the middle one first. Got that one loosened up. Now moving on to the last one. All right, so now we got all four loosened up and we should be able to pry this thing up. Gonna be using my pry bar here. But remember, we gotta make sure we're very careful on this part because we don't wanna break any parts of the throttle bodies or any sensors around it. So what you wanna do is pry on each side of this throttle body until this throttle body finally pops off. I'm gonna start off on the left side, pry on the left corner of the throttle body, pull up slowly, then I'm gonna pry on the right side of the throttle body. Be careful with this plastic area that's covering the throttle cables. Just be patient with it. Now I'm gonna pry on this part here very slowly. I'm not gonna to touch the sensor. Just gonna put a little bit of pressure to pull it off a little bit. And there we have it. So now that we got the throttle bodies out of the way finally, there's one more sensor here that we want to be careful with that we're going to disconnect, which the tab to push on it to get it out should be on top. We're going to push in, just going to pull down on it and pull back. 
Now you could continue taking off the throttle body cable at this point, now you can see the whole bottom of it, but I'm just gonna leave mine hanging on top because I don't see it necessary to remove it. But the next important thing that we gotta do before we start working getting closer to that starter is we gotta cover up these holes. Remember, the last thing you want is a small tool or any plastic or any kind of metal falling in there. So just keep that in mind, guys. Take like two seconds to cover those holes up, plate safe. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty close to the starter, but we gotta get this big cover out of the way. If you don't wanna rip it, you're gonna have to start off by removing from the very top. Just pull it back, careful with those throttle body clamps that they don't come off. And also, you might have some trash on this, try your best not to get any trash inside your engine, even though we got it covered. We're gonna pull this off all the way back as much as we can. So we're gonna have to get this pipe out of the way, which is held by one bolt and a couple of clamps on the left side. But before we do that, we're gonna have to remove at least this bottom cover here. Once we get it out, out of the way, we're gonna have to drain the coolant in order to get all the hoses out of the way to get that starter out. Okay, so once we get this fairing piece removed, or at least out of the way, you're gonna go to this bottom of this pipe and there's this 10 millimeter bolt here. You're gonna loosen that and this will drain all your coolant out slowly. You could easily remove this big hose here that's coming from the same pipe and it will speed up the process. And once you remove this, there should be a little copper washer. Make sure not to lose that. Once you put this bolt back in, you're gonna have to put that washer back in. Otherwise, you're gonna have some leaks. Once it gets to the point where it's just dripping drops, you can pretty much just put that bolt back in. Go ahead and put it tight, because there's no need to remove it again. And then I'll be disconnecting this top hose from the main pipe that we gotta get out of the way to get to that starter. All right, so I finally got the pipe out of the way. So again, it's best to start off with this one here. You're just gonna unclamp the hose that's right here and pull the hose off. Then you're just gonna loosen the screw on this clamp. Again, we're not removing the clamp entirely. We're just loosening it enough just to be able to get this hose off the thermostat housing. And then finally, we're gonna remove this bolt from this side here. Once you get that off just wiggle it little by little slowly out because you don't want to pull on it too hard and then mess up that rubber seal now we can completely see the starter at this point and we're gonna start off by removing this cable here which is, should be a 10 millimeter bolt after that we got two more bolts that we got to remove that's holding down the starter once you get all that removed we should be able to pop out the old starter okay at this point i got everything disconnected from the starter and all i'm doing is wiggling it back slowly so it comes loose. Yours might not be that easy to get loose. So what you can do is stick a screwdriver between the starter and the engine casing, and then just tilt back and forth until this starter breaks loose. I'm gonna pull back all the way first. And while I pull back, I'm gonna push down on the housing, not too hard, just enough where it doesn't touch the starter at all. I'm gonna pull right over the housing, just like that. I should be able to get the starter out. And there we have it. The one thing you do wanna make sure is when you install the new one that you have a new gasket already on the new starter. If you bought a new starter, chances are it comes with it. But if you buy a used starter, which there's nothing wrong with as long as it's working, be sure that you have a good enough gasket to put back in because you're not gonna to wanna to do all this all over again for about a $5 gasket. So if you think that the gasket looks bad, go ahead and order a new one. Let the bike sit for a couple of days if that's what it takes for that gasket to come in. Because again, trust me, you're not gonna to wanna to do this again. You're gonna hate yourself at the end, all for a small little gasket. All right, so before we put in our new starter, be sure to use a little bit of grease or even oil just to lubricate the gasket pretty good. Therefore, when we're installing in the starter, we don't have any chances of the gasket ripping or tearing. Also make sure you clean where the starter sits just to make sure that there's no dirt and debris getting between the gasket. So it's pretty easy to put the starter back in. Just put it in exactly how you took it out. And keep in mind, you're able to move the thermostat housing a little back if you need to. Once we got the starter in place, now we just gotta put the two bolts that hold the starter down. And the last part for the starter, we're just gonna put the terminal back on on the top okay now that we got the starter fully in place just be sure you put that cover back on that covers up the terminal because if not you have a risk of causing a short so just make sure you have that put on correctly next we're going to put on the coolant pipe back on that we removed earlier we're going to do the same thing on this gasket here we're going to put just a little bit of grease on this just to make sure it slides in there easily and we don't take the risk of messing up the gasket all right so now i got this bolt tightened down i got this clamp tightened down that goes to the thermostat housing and i got this little hose that i disconnected I already put back as well well with the clamp on so pretty much from here we're doing everything backwards next thing I'm gonna do is just put the shield back on okay once you put the shield back on just be sure that the shield doesn't cover where the throttle bodies are gonna clamp onto so basically any of the four rubber pieces first sensor we're gonna start off with is the one that's really hard to get to with the throttle bodies on all we got to do is connect that back in place once that's fully in then we can go ahead and remove these paper towels now again just be careful nothing falls in them and now we're just gonna put a little bit of grease 
on all four of these rubber pieces. Therefore, we can put throttle bodies on top, push them down in place to make it a lot easier with that grease in between, and we should be good. Okay, next, obviously put your throttle bodies on top of all those rubber pieces, and just be sure before you push this down that there's nothing in between those rubber pieces, wires, or any kind of hoses. Then you're evenly gonna push down. I always have one hand on this side and one hand on this side, and then I just push firmly down until it snaps in. In this case, mine's already snapped in. It's not moving. Now I just gotta tighten down those four bolts on those clamps, and remember, you're gonna tighten the two on the left from the left side of the bike, and the other two from the right side of the bike. But before I tighten those things, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my throttle cable back on. And again, the easiest way to do this is did what we did before. Hold this with your finger, hold the throttle plate with your thumb while you put the cable in with your other hand and it should be that simple. Once you put your throttle cable in, do not forget to tighten that cable. And I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna roll on the throttle just to make sure I did everything correctly. And if you did it correctly, if you let go of the throttle, it should pop back in place like so. At this point, I've already tightened all four of my bolts on the bottom of the throttle bodies. Be sure that you don't over tighten those because those clamps easily bend. You just need them tight enough where they feel pretty snug. They're not gonna move around. Now I'm gonna start on the top side of the engine on all the sensors that we disconnected. Starting from the left to right, just gonna simply connect everything back in. There's one, there's two, there's three, four, and five. Next, we can connect these green connectors. Should have two of them. Push those right in. Just make sure all your connections are connected correctly. That's good to go. Okay, now I'm gonna start working back on the air box. Gonna put the bottom of the air box back in. But just remember, we gotta connect our holes on the right side with the clamp. And also, we gotta connect the little mortar that the air box has on the bottom. Then we could tighten all six bolts to tie down the air box to the throttle bodies. All right, so once we got all six of those bolts tightened up, we're gonna go ahead and put the plastic pieces that this bracket here holds. Starting off with the bottom three tabs. One once you have them in place, it's as simple as pushing right back. Now that we got the bottom three tabs in place, we're gonna do the top two. Same thing, just make sure they're both in the tabs and then push back slowly and they'll both snap in place. If you have it on correctly, it should look just like this once it's done. Now we're gonna put this hose back on that's connected to the back of the air box. Make sure to put that clamp back in place like so. Now moving on to putting the top of the air box back on. Okay, so now that we have the top of the air box on, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the fuel line. Just reattach that in there, just plug it in, push it all the way in. You'll hear it snap. Push the orange tab down. Now we're just gonna connect our top injectors, put it back in the groove on top of the air box here that holds the wire down. And then we're just gonna reconnect the connector. There we go, like so. And now we can put all 10 screws back onto the air box. Okay, so I got everything on the air box already put on. And now I'm gonna move on to putting the gas tank back on. Okay, so I got the back bolt on just to hold the tank. I got the tank pried open like I had earlier. I'm gonna start off with my fuel line. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in place, but just be careful because it is plastic and you don't wanna push too hard. Just wanna push it enough to where you hear it snap in place. Don't forget to put the plastic cover on it if yours had it. Just gonna put this back in place. Then I'll connect the green connector that goes on the fuel pump. All right, got the green one out of the way. Now moving on to the other side, gotta connect the white one. But before we connect the white one, it's a lot easier if you go ahead and connect those two hoses that we removed back in place. Just make sure you put the correct ones back on where they were. The bottom one on mine, I labeled with a black piece of tape. Therefore, I don't forget that that one goes on the bottom. Then we can go ahead and connect the white connector. All right, we got everything on the fuel pump connected. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put in all the coolant that I removed earlier back into the bike before I start it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put this plastic piece that I took off off those three bolts. I'm gonna put that fairing back on in place and then we're finally gonna crank this thing up. Hopefully everything goes right. Okay, so I got the bottom piece back on. I got the cooling in the bike and all you have pretty much from here is you gotta put on these bolts on both sides. Remember, mine didn't have any. I gotta find some that I can screw on there for now. Just bolt on that one in the front. Put your covers back on, which is held by one bolt in the back of the tank and then put your seat back on. Go ahead and test the starter to see if it works. Now, obviously, if you're putting your fuel tank back on, let the fuel pump prime by just turning on and off your key a good five times just to make sure that those injectors have enough fuel to get the bike started. We're gonna go ahead and hit the starter button and see what it sounds like. And 
there you have it guys that's how you replace a starter on an 09 to 2014 r1 you do have to get a lot of stuff out of the way nothing new that's usually how most bikes are starter should cost below 100 bucks i'll probably put the one that i got specifically in the description in case you're interested in that but like always i'm really hoping that this helps a lot of people out there hit the like button if you like what you see subscribe if you haven't if you like enjoying videos like this and feel free to comment if you have any tips yourself that you want to share that might make this a lot faster or easier but that's going to be it for this video guys hope y'all enjoyed it I really hope it helps a lot of people out there like always don't forget god loves every single one of y'all god bless y'all and we'll see you on the next video